Raphael, it's great to have you. Uh, I wonder, is this a move to differentiate you guys from the likes of Uber and DoorDash and delivery? This is an industry, quick commerce, that is known to burn through cash. What does a private label do for your margins and eventually GoPuff's profitability? You know, Deirdre, thank you so much for having me. You know, we're really, really excited uh, for our entry into private label. Uh, you know, we're launching 100 SKUs across the home essentials, snacks and drink category, really high quality, affordable SKUs that our customers have been requesting. You know, as we looked at internal data, 80% of GOPUF customers were looking for, uh, you know, an affordable, high quality private label assortment. And the flavor profile within uh, the GOPUF customer is a little different than kind of the national average. So we're launching things like habanero barbecue almonds, everything seasoned cashews. And I like to just remind everyone, right, we've been doing this for eight years, right? We've been launching new categories and uh, new geographies uh, for a long time. We created this instant needs category. And we, you know, in the, in the very beginning, uh, we didn't really raise any money. For the first two years, we really spent nailing the business model before scaling it, building kind of best-in-class tech, best-in-class infrastructure, and then the operational firepower to really extend our lead as the leader in this instant needs category. Yeah, and Raphael, certainly you guys captured a lot of market share sort of quietly in the space. Um, as you look to an eventual IPO, I wonder then, you say that you're sort of different than the other delivery companies. How should investors value GoPuff? I remember when Uber went public and they tried to tell investors that they were the quote-unquote Amazon of transportation. That's what they wanted to go out as. But the market didn't really buy that. Two years, more than two years later, they're trading below their IPO price. Why should GoPuff be treated differently? You know, we have a lot of respect for Amazon, right? I think Amazon has shown that the vertically integrated model is the model that wins long term for, for consumer demand and uh, and like customer overall customer satisfaction and profitability. And while we share that same kind of tenant with Amazon with vertical integration, uh, we are very different, right? We created this instant needs category, as you mentioned, kind of from a market share perspective, right? If you look at third party data, you go up past 73 percent share uh, in the instant needs category here in the U.S. And as you guys may know, you know, we opened up in the UK in the last couple of months. We had a soft launch in, uh, in France. And we're really playing to be the number one player uh, globally, not just here in the U.S. Raphael, I know you can't give us any specific figures, but I wonder what that profitability picture looks like for you guys, what the unit economics are, and if that is more like an Amazon versus, you know, an Uber. Yeah, you know, as, uh, as I mentioned before, right, we, last eight years, we really spent a lot of time nailing the business model before scaling it. So before we started opening up a whole host of buildings and opening up kind of new geographies, we really focused on the unit economics and delivering positive contribution margin. That's why if you look at our comp markets, we have really, really strong unit economics. We have positive contribution margins in our comp markets. And it kind of gives us all the confidence in the world to continue to reinvest in the consumer experience, to continue to reinvest in technology and kind of open up infrastructure on a global scale. Well, Raphael, thank you for being with us. We hope to talk to you again soon. That's GoPuff co-founder and co-CEO Raphael Ilishayev.